Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome once again to the Secrets of the High Demand Coach podcast. And I am here with yet another high demand coach. It is the one, the only, Rubini Karun. Now, she is a healer and leadership coach who has worked with C-suite and functional level leadership to create organizational change. In her perspective, revenue, optimization, vision, strategy, and high performance are all consequences of one thing, and that is alignment. Primarily working with leaders and founders, she aims to redefine what performance and success mean in business optimizations, and she is passionate about bringing shifts in perspectives for change makers and ways to enable business growth, employee experiences, and leadership alignment for tremendous financial success through it all. Rubini, I'm so excited to have you here. We've had a great time even just chatting before the show. I know this is going to be a great episode. Before we dive in, I've got some questions for you. But before we get there, I'd love to hear a little bit. How did you get into this world of coaching and uh, what ultimately made you make the leap? So to, to tell you the truth, this wasn't a planned move. It was a move that was created because I was in consulting. And through consulting, I was already coaching leaders, leadership, and c suite and I saw how much suffering there was in leadership and the difference that good, bad, and great leaders meant to organizational growth. And it kind of shifted in my brain then and there that that's what I wanted to do. That's where I wanted to be. And I wanted to help people not feel like they were dying inside and succeed while being aligned. So it developed as I worked in consulting. Yeah. And, and I get asked this question a lot, uh, and, and I think it's because there's about a thousand different answers to it, but how do you distinguish between coaching and consulting? Sure. I think coaching is allowing an individual to come up with their resources, allowing them to understand their strengths, listening to the true problem of the matter that they're going through. And consulting is a little bit like mentorship, where you have the answers through your experience. Maybe you have 25, 30 years experience, and you're sort of teaching them, holding their hand and telling them what to do. So that's how I distinguish the two. I've got another layer to it, which is a be- which is being a healer. So I confuse the mix even more. Okay. <laughs> and I think we all do in some way, shape, or form. Um, so you talk a lot about alignment. And, and I'm wondering, let's just start at the ground level. Uh, when you use the word alignment, what do you mean and, and why is it so important? Sure. When I first started, when I said alignment, people thought I meant spiritual. And it's far from that. What I mean by alignment is everyone has a y-axis, an x-axis. And as they go through life, if they question themselves, typically their axis is either towards the left or towards the right. And for me, align- alignment means coming with a centered axis in self first before serving the multiple plates that we serve daily. Mm-hmm. That centered axis to me means alignment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've I've heard uh, a couple of studies that really centered on, uh, around this idea of uh, being inwardly sound, uh, as and, and others focus as to the central tenets for for high quality leadership. Uh, yeah. What tends to get in the way of that? So I'll be pretty biased when I answer this question, and I love it. Thank you so much because I'm a trauma healer, and a lot of the time, what happens in the sandbox when we're five? comes up in leadership when we're 30 or 40 or whatever that is. Because the ability to use our voice, the ability to feel confident, to not have imposter syndrome, is all bred within subconscious programming before seven. And that's the hidden gem that a lot of people don't find out about until two days. Yeah. Yeah. And so how do you know, how do you know when you're out of alignment? What are some signs and symptoms to look for? I also love that question because it's so simple. A lot of people, when they ask me that, I ask them, reflect. Ask yourself, am I loving what I do every day? And if it's not an 8 upon 10 or 7 upon 10, if it's a 3, there should be support that you seek. Because a 3 is everything's going to SHIT. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. But, you know, everything's going down the drain. And that's the key. We don't ask ourselves every day because we're such masters at going. Like the chugging pen train, we're just going, we're just doing, we're just handling. I mean, like even in consulting, I've done thousands of kickoffs. They're all high performance, but this self-check in and this self-reflection, like, am I doing the best that I want to do for me? It's not even, am I okay? It's just, do I feel good in my success? Right? A lot of people think, 
that something that screws up in life is okay when it's not, like health and relationships and love. And I see so much of that, right? So that's why I'm really passionate about what I do. I don't want that anymore in success for people. You talk about doing this every day. In your experience, mm-hmm. how how quickly does it change? And how quickly should we wor- be we, we worried if it does? How quick? Okay. So in a in a way, the people who come to me, they are introvert, introverted leaders, servant leaders who aren't getting heard and are stagnant. So you see, they've already suffered and they've reached a point where they cannot go on anymore. So they are already worried when they come to me. Mm. And so when they come to me, they don't know why something's not working. And typically the question I hate them hearing, it hurts my heart, is what's wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me? And it just breaks my heart, right? Um, and 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 to me, it's like understanding that that level of suffering is not needed. It can you can approach a person and seek support earlier. It's very important, right? And doing this every day—that's what I see yeah. for the people. We had a previous guest on the show who said, um, uh, "It's not what's wrong with you; it's what happened to you," which I think is right in line with with what you're saying. And and so. Uh, Let's say let's say we're kind of going through a week or, or back in that eight to ten range, right? And things are going pretty well, uh, but we have we, we've got a bad day, right? And a bad day becomes two or three, and we've been sitting in that three to five range for a few days. What are some questions to ask ourselves, or or uh, something that we can think through to kind of get that back on track? I love that. Just like predictive success, there's also predictive failure. And when the three to five days happens, the self-question of, is this dip the same dip that's happening every day? Is this the same root cause? And typically, it will be because of one belief. I don't know enough, or I'm being silenced, or my ideas are never heard. It's this, Typically, it's the same belief, or maybe two or three at max, that is recurring in the person's life that's causing that two, three, five day uh, mm. stretch so yeah. yeah hope that answers fascinating fascinating uh another thing i want to shift you just slightly we kind of build on what we've we've gotten to so far but you, you talk about this idea of executive presence so yeah. uh, a lot of times uh, the folks that i think both you and i work with are are busy leaders uh they're trying to do right by their organization and and maybe even looking at this from the other lens of of founders and ceos who are saying hey who who is the team that i need around me Right. What what is that executive presence and, and why do some folks have it and others don't? I think it's this underlying simmering confidence to change the world. <laughs> so I think executive presence is, and I'm biased again, is around alignment. Knowing that your center axis is solid, knowing that you're confident in the topic that you're speaking about, and you're surrounded by support. A lot of leaders think that it's a solo journey, but it's not. It's a team effort and being surrounded with the generals that they need who are also equipped with the specializations that they don't have yeah. allows them to feel supported to rise and have that present presence, that executive confidence to speak in a way that is specialized. Yeah. Less is more. And, and, and again, I will kind of take the, the, the lens of a founder. A lot of the times I'll hear founders who, who are frustrated by one of their executives. They're not keeping up. They're not, they're not showing up with an executive presence. What is the founder or CEO or whatever that title is, president, what is their role in creating the environment where their folks can step up? This question is asked so many times because the answer differs for everyone. And in my opinion, the answer is creating that safety to ask the question and get the answer. And an example is through the pandemic, it wasn't safe to say you're failing. And so this Helter Skelter uh, character and vibe started happening in, in leadership where everyone was covering things. However, when, they, when there were presidents and CEOs that were open to say, hey, this is not working well and I understand, but tell me what you think we can do to fix this. So that openness and safety to have that conversation, to understand the emotion and to address the gap for what it is. It's data. It's not a personal attack, which is what most people make it to be. And why do you think that is? What is it that gets in the way of creating that safety and, mm-hmm. and for the executive being able to step into it? Fear. 
<laughs> just fear. Fear of failure. Fear of not showing up. Fear of not making things happen. It's like the neck on, cho- neck on the chopping block syndrome every day. And that's really tiring. And that's what I call the soul drainage. That's when people tend to slowly die every day inside, right? Yeah. It's this fear. And it can be a multitude of things that, have, that is creating the fear. But the first one is fear of failure or not being good enough or not proving uh, to have what it takes to succeed. It's one word, yeah. Oftentimes I've found when folks bump into that fear, it, it's almost um, a, a signal to stop, right? It's like, don't go there. Uh, do you find that's particularly effective? Is it true? Uh, or, or how should we interpret that signal to really step into full alignment with, with ourselves? I love that. A lot of, I, I, I would love to quote his name, but it's just escaping me at this point. But failing forward is a favorite of mine. Because allowing a person to fail forward to a certain extent is great in creating growth and change, right? However, when there are consequences where 30,000 people are going to be laid off, those types of failures should be stopped. And an entire team should come in to problem solve and synthesize the best way forward. So a lot of times in failure, and just to add on this, I know that wasn't part of the question, but... A lot of times when there's failure happening and there's a dire consequence that's happening, people at the top tend to be too scared to involve more people to make a decision. But that kind of collaborative leadership will probably help, but it's it's not done enough. It's so true. It's the exact time when we need the most input that we tend to go for the least. Uh, Fast. Ah. Well, Ruby, there's a question I like to ask all of my guests, and it is this. What would you say is the biggest secret you wish wasn't a secret at all? What's that one thing you wish everybody watching or listening today knew? I always listen to your podcast, and I love this question, so I am prepared. The biggest secret is that struggle and sacrifice is needed for success. This is simply not true. It is simply not true. If you're in ease, if you're in flow and alignment, success is so much sweeter. But there's this myth that if you're that, you don't get the success. It's not true. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> Fascinating. So uh, there's some folks listening to this and, and they could use a coach. They could use someone in their corner, you know, that support that they need. And they want to know more about you and the work that you do. Where can they find that out and how can they reach out to you? The best place to find me is on LinkedIn. To just search Rubini Karun, my name is somewhere on this page, but that's the best way to look at my testimonials, what I do, and to connect with me and speak with me as well. Thank you. Fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, Rubini, thank you so much for being on the show. It's just an honor and privilege having you here. It's such a fun and deep and profound conversation. I really appreciated it. And for those of you watching and listening, you know that your time and attention mean the world to us. I hope you got as much out of this conversation as I know I did, and I cannot wait to see you next time. Take care.